So I want to talk about, um, for the ones who were called into isolation, again, since the Lord put this on my heart to speak about the past like month or two months, um, cause there's been somewhat like, I want to say almost, I feel like it's a spiritual attack and, um, like, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe three or four weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Anyway, I scroll under my Facebook and there was someone with a, um, so-called godly, whatever ministry Facebook page. And they were actually speaking out against, um, those who are in isolation that God's called to isolation or to wilderness seasons and stuff and saying that it's from the devil. And this isn't the first time I've heard of it. Um, I've heard of it like years before too, when I started this walk with God and, um, you know, I've had people ask me, you know, is it of the devil or whatnot? And religious people, um, accusing, you know, of people like us that are called to isolation that it's from the devil or whatnot, but it's absolutely not. They're actually speaking against what God is doing. So if you're going through that or experiencing that, um, just know that these people do not know what they're talking about. Okay. And just ignore them. Um, so I went and did some of my own research about people who, um, went through isolation and stuff in the Bible. And these are people that are, of course, well known. All right. And I'm not saying isolation is forever. <laughs> there are seasons and times for different things. And, um, as God uses me to be a testimony on this platform, you know, I'm just going to keep on, you know, putting out different things that he's been putting me through and doing in my life while I've been in isolation. And if it hadn't been for this isolation period, like there's no way that I would be where I'm at right now. Like it's all by the grace of God and because he separated me from people. And I know he's doing that with other people. And I believe it has to also do with, um, the calling that he has on our life. And also he's, um, preparing us to go home because this life here on this earth is preparation for eternity. Um, it's not to be taken lightly. All right. And that's where people fall into the trap of the cares of this world and, you know, doing what you want and all that stuff, not realizing that, um, this is prep time. Okay. Becoming like Jesus. And then for whoever's here for his return, which we don't know when he's coming, but you know, that also we have to be prepared for. And that's why he hasn't came still because we're clearly not ready. All right. He's coming for a bride, um, without spot or wrinkle. And I believe that's in Ephesians, but, um, yeah. So I noticed that I'm not saying this is all the people, but I noticed a lot of this that I'm hearing from, meaning the people that are coming against those who are in isolation, making the, these comments that it's from the devil or it's not good to be in isolation. These are people that I've noticed that have been raised in a godly family they don't have many testimonies of struggling. Like they have what I call the perfect normal life. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that's like. Um, but that's just, that's how I see it. You know, we all see things differently. Um, because they grew up with a mom and a dad that raised them in a church setting or, like they all were followers of Jesus. And there are those few people that I have encountered and seen that, that has been blessed with that life. Um, absolutely. So anyway, they don't, they don't understand this isolation. Um, a lot of us that are in isolation or been in isolation, not all, but a lot of us, I mean, we were gangbangers or drug addicts alcohol addicts, um, pimps, prostitutes, whatever, you know, and, um, they didn't live that lifestyle. Okay. They don't know what it's like. They didn't have that kind of hardship. Um, like being molested and raped. That's what I'm talking about. Um, cause a lot of people has been molested or raped. And so they just, they don't know. They don't know what it's like to be broken from that and have, 
abusive people in their life. Maybe you were physically abused, um, just verbally and physically assaulted, you know, with people's mouths or fist, feet, however you were abused. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. So they just don't get it. They don't get it, okay? So just don't even don't even pay attention to that. Um, just do what God has called you to do. And eventually he'll bring you out and start bringing you around people. And like I said before, he'll start bringing you people um, to fellowship with. You won't have to go out looking for them. Like God will literally bring those people to you. Um, I have stories, testimonies on that. So it's real, okay? But anyway... Back to what I was saying. Um, some examples of people in the Bible who went through isolation periods, okay? Adam. Adam was in isolation, like for real, until um, God brought him Eve, right? Joseph. Joseph was in isolation. That is a very, very inspiring um, story in poor guy can't imagine what he was going through given that vision and then like the opposite happening <laughs> or so it seemed until um everything came to pass then we got Moses Moses was said to spend a lot of time in social isolation um Elijah Elijah that's another one uh John John the Baptist um even Jesus Jesus was um, in isolation alone for 40 days in the desert, okay, with no food, being tempted by Satan. All right, um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet, he was also in a time, too, of isolation. And then you got Paul, all right, Paul was in isolation, too, so... I don't see how this is coming from the devil when people in the Bible and even Jesus himself was in isolation. You see? So anyway, those are some, um, some people to go like read about and see what they went through. If you know, you feel up to it or not, but I just wanted to, um, <laughs> put that in here because like I said, there's, there's people coming against us. Some people even think we're crazy, but whatever. Um, I have learned, and this one has not been easy, to be um, what it's like to be content. You know, being content with having not much money and being content with having more money than I thought I would have. Not being rich, though, definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. But I've learned those kinds of things. Um, living by faith, you know, um, listening to God and not man. Like there's just whole whole bunch of things. And I put this in some of my other videos. But yeah, I'm going to come back on here in just a minute and talk about what are you doing in this time. And sorry, my kids back there making those sounds. Okay, 